All right, welcome back. So we are here in the shop working on projects, working on uh, Tasso's rally car from OTC Racing. It's an 04 WRX. And what we're helping them do is put an STI transmission in. And in the process of doing that, we realized that this is a great opportunity to kind of revisit the topic of doing an STI uh, transmission swap into a WRX. Because after we've done the, the first couple of videos, uh, there's a lot of common questions that keep coming up. Just, you know, some things that maybe we didn't go into as deep enough detail or, or maybe kind of glossed over. So we wanted to kind of dive into those. And so that's, that's the purpose of this video. So we're, we're going to skip around a little bit. Um, but we're going to start with wiring. So one of the most common questions that we get asked about doing the swap is uh, speed sensor wiring and neutral and reverse position switch wiring. Um, first, speedo sensor. Pretty easy uh, because it is the same sensor between the five speed and six speeds. So if your transmission has it, you just undo your, your pigtail, plug it into the, the six speed and you're done. Worst case, if you got a, a transmission that didn't have the speed sensor, again, it is the same sensor. Just unscrew it from the five speed, screw it into the six speed, and you're done. Now, on both the WRX and the STI starting in 2008, they no longer had the speed sensor on the transmission. So if you are putting an older STI transmission in a newer WRX, an 8 to 14, you don't have to worry about the speed sensor. Just make sure that that hole is plugged and uh, your, your car is getting the vehicle speed from a tone ring. On, on, your front, um, on your front axle. But if you're putting a newer tra STI transmission, an eight, eight, uh, 2008 or newer STI transmission in an older WRX that is expecting that signal from the transmission, there is no way you can put that speed sensor on the transmission itself. But there's a solution. So we carry the MAPD CCD controller. The MAPD CCD also makes a VSS controller, vehicle speed sensor controller. What that does is it intercepts the vehicle speed sensor signal and translates it into the signal that the, um, that the ECU is looking for for vehicle speed from the transmission. So you just need that extra add-on if you've got a newer transmission going into an older WRX. Um, for the neutral and reverse position switches, conveniently, those are also the same between the five speed and the six speed. But what throws people is that on the five speed, it's a four pin connector because you just have those two sensors. On the STI, it's a six pin connector because that wiring harness is the same one that sends the, the DCCD control through it. So there's a couple, couple easy solutions. First, the, the sensors themselves, there's, there's little clips where they go into the wiring harness. You can undo those clips, clip in the five-speed harness to the sensors, and just use the five-speed harness, but you would have to then cut the DCCD wires. Um, option two, if you don't have those sensors for whatever reason, again, they're the same or switches, I should say. They're the same between the five speed and the six speed. Um, so you can just remove them from your five speed and put them into the six speed. Um, though again, you would have to cut the wires uh, for the center diff. Um, the other option, if you just want something plug and play, fortunately there's a good option for that now. iWire has come out with a plug and play harness for uh, that six pin STI wiring harness that then has the two leads that come off for your center diff controller. Um, they even have a nice um, connector for where you connect those two wires to your diff controller. The nice thing there is, um, and this is something you got to consider, if you're, if you're hard wiring in the center diff, make sure you've got some kind of a clip there, because if you have to do a clutch or drop the transmission for any reason and it's hardwired to your car, you're going to have to cut them again and then reconnect them. So just you know, put in a connector, Bywire's got all that done for you. So that's, that's a nice option if you don't want to cut anything. Um, so next, uh, Kind of moving down, clutch, compa clutch compatibility is something that we get um, periodically. So if you have a two liter WRX that had the pull style clutch, same style of clutch as the STI, yes, it can go into the six speed bell housing. If you just bought a brand new clutch, whatever, it's working for the engine build that you have. You don't want to spend money on a brand new clutch and flywheel. Yes, you can, can take the five speed clutch and flywheel and put it into the the six-speed bell housing as long as you have the, the pole-style clutch. But they have to be done as a pair. WX flywheel, WX clutch, or STI flywheel and STI clutch. If you need a new clutch, we always recommend looking at the STI options because everything is just physically larger on the STI clutch, the disc itself, everything. So it is much easier to get a higher capacity clutch for the STI versus the WX. So um, yeah, if you need a new one, that's what you would want. And just remember again, you have to do them as a pair, WRX or uh, WRX flywheel and WRX clutch or STI flywheel and STI clutch because they're not interchangeable there. So um, 
Another one of the questions that we get quite often is about uh, the drive shaft and why you would need a, a different one. And there, there's two reasons really. The first is the six speed is longer than the five speed, so you need a shorter drive shaft once you put it in, in the car. Um, but the other part of it is, it, depending on which rear differential you're using, the flange where the propeller shaft bolts to the rear diff has different bolt spacing between the R160 and the R180. So you need a drive shaft that will be the correct length but will also bolt up to your diff. So that's why we like drive shaft shop because they have both yokes available for the R160 or the R180. But depending on the situation, it turns out there's, there's a, something good to know which is that the, uh, the flange on the diff side itself is interchangeable between the R160 and the R180. So if you have a situation where everything is correct except you can't get the propeller shaft to bolt to the, to the rear diff, you can't undo that big nut at the end of the uh, differential, pull that flange off, bolt on the new flange, and then, then use that drive shaft. So th those uh, companion flanges are available independently, and you know if you've got both diffs, you can move, move the flanges over if that's what's going to be the best solution for your swap. Um, and on the rear diffs, Another question we get is about the rear diff ratios because again, if, if you're doing this swap, especially if you're trying to pull everything together used, the, the, the one thing that you have to make sure of is that your SCI transmission has the correct ratio for the rear diff that you're using, whichever rear diff that is. So here's, here are the, the WX ratios. From 02 to 05, the WX had an R160 with a 3.545 rear ring and pinion. In 06 and 07 only, the, the WX had a 3.7 to 1 ratio. From 2008 to 2014, the WRX had a 3.9 to 1 rear ring and pinion in the R160. Now the other key thing to note in those year ranges is from 2002 to 2007, the WRX got a viscous coupling in the rear differential. Starting in 2008, when the WRX got traction control, it's an open rear diff. So if you put an open rear diff uh, with an SCI transmission that has DCCD and a, a LSD or a torque biasing front diff, that can cause some interesting issues, especially if you're not using a diff controller. So keep that in mind. Now on the STI side, 2004-2005, the rear diff in the R180 is a 3.9 to 1. But there's, a, there's an interesting asterisk to that, which is 2006. We had a customer come to us that was, was having some really bizarre um, drivetrain issues and handling issues after he'd put in a new transmission. What he had done is he had, he'd gotten an 06 STI transmission. But it turns out, what, what ended up happening, and it, it was an 06 SCA, we, we verified it by VIN, and the transmission was correct for the car by VIN, but it was actually an 05 STI transmission. So the very early production 06 STIs still got the 05 uh, transmission with the 3.9 rear ring and pinions. So this is why if you're getting anything used, or if there's any doubt whatsoever, you've got to run the serial number on the transmission. Um, because in this case, everything should have been correct by year, but there was just one of those weird Subaru crossovers where some early production of 06s got the 05 stuff and it, and it took out a center diff. So always run that serial number. But then, so basically, so from 04, 05 to very early 06, it's a 3.9 rear R180 ring and pinion. Starting in late 06 to present, it is a 3.545 rear ring and pinion ratio. So this is why in our kits we like the 07 STI transmission with the R160 with the 3.545. It's just kind of this nice crossover where everything works and you can kind of you know, move back and forth from there. So the last question we wanted to talk about is what is involved in running STI hubs. For Tasso, um, he got a whole setup and these are STI hubs. So we're going to talk about it first for the GDs and then for the GRs because there's some interesting differences there. So first for the GDs, so where, where this usually comes up is wanting to run STI axles, um, just for, for strength or whatever. So the starting point is if you want to run the STI axle, you have to run the STI hub. If you don't want to change out your suspension to STI suspension, and you have a WRX, uh, a GD WRX, your only option is the 04 STI um, front knuckle. That is the only one that has the same bolt spacing for the suspension. If you put on an, an 05 or newer, um, STI hub, the bolt spacing of the suspension is different and you then have to put on STI suspension. Now, um, for, the, for the brakes there's really no issue up front, you know, because like the Brembo's are interchangeable, so are the WRX depending on um, the STI, I'm sorry, should say that more clearly. 
So there's no issue in brake compatibil compatibility between the WRX or the ST knuckle up front. Um, the biggest thing is just the suspension. It, it, if you want to run the, the uh, WRX suspension, your only option is 04 and also for the 5 by 100 bolt pattern. If, you're, if you've got something used and you're not sure what you've got, it's actually very easy to tell. Um, 04 STIs and, and earlier had the same press in wheel bearing as the WRX. Um, starting in 05, they completely redesigned the hub and the wheel bearing. So the wheel bearing went to that uh, cartridge system where it's the wheel bearing and the hub together that bolts to the knuckle. So if, if that's what you've got, you've got an 05 or newer STI hub. Um, now on the back, same, same starting point. If, you have, if you're running the STI axles, you have to run the STI hubs. The, the extra complication in the back is the parking brake. So if you're running the STI hubs, you have to run the STI backing plate. If you're running the STI backing plate, you have to run the STI parking brake. So that means moving all the parking brake shoes over. And that is physically larger than what the WRX got. So, and, and the other part of that is uh, the, the caliper. So the backing plate is what the caliper bolts to. If you're running the STI backing plate, you have two choices of caliper, the, the Brembo's or the, the Subaru two pots. Now, then you also have to have a rotor that will work with them. So, uh, again, if you're running an 04 STI rear, that's 5 by 100. So, basically, it would be an 04 STI rotor with a Brembo. Tosso is a rally car, he's got to be able to fit 15 inch wheels. So, the only option for him are the Subaru 2 pots. Now, fortunately, they bolt up to the, the backing plate, but you need a special proprietary rotor to clear the R180 parking brake and still have the, the 290 millimeter size rotor for the Subaru 2 pots. Fortunately, DBA makes them. I think there's another, maybe one other company that makes them, but it is a unique rotor. And since we we're doing that with Tasso's car, I can tell you that um, his 06 WX rotors would not clear either the parking brake or the hub itself. So if you're going to run two pots with, uh, with the, the STI parking brake, you need that special proprietary gravel rotor. But fortunately, there's at least an option there. Um, if you're just going to run um, the, the Brembo's, then, then basically an 04 STI rotor is, is an easy solution. And, and we're going to dive into Brembo rear calipers in much greater detail here shortly uh, with other videos. Okay, and to talk about the GRWRXs, uh, we wanted to bring our 2014 WRX Pikes P car over uh, because you know we've done that swap in here and we could actually look at all the, the bits and pieces. So um, the interesting thing with the GRs is that there's no longer different spline count at the hubs between the WRX and the STI. Um, so if you're wanting to run STI axles, usually that's the motivation for looking at running STI knuckles. Um, but now that, that spline count difference is not an issue. The, the interesting wrinkle is the narrow body WRXs. So the 8, 9, and 10 WRX had a, a narrower track width than the STIs. Uh, then starting at 11, 11 to 14, the WRX had the same track width as the STI. And that is, if you have a narrow body car, that's the biggest issue that you're going to run into. So like in our car here at 14, we're running the R180 diff and these are just STI axles just bolted right up in the back. But if you've got a narrow body car and you're trying to use the STI axles, they're too long. Um, so the most direct way to fix that is just to, to extend the track width to, to match the wide body cars. So, but there are different things going on there. So up front, what it is that the, the hubs and knuckles are the same for all the WRXs, but the lower control arm is different. It's a, it's a longer lower control arm for the uh, wide body WRX or the STI. So if you wanted to correct the width up front, you'd have to look at the lower control arm. In the back, all of the suspension linkages are the same. The, the width comes from the knuckle itself. So you have to run uh, an 11 to 14 WRX rear knuckle um, to get the width so, so that the STI axle would be a direct bolt in. Um, keep in mind up front, you have the same issue if you wanted to run an STI knuckle uh, in that the, the spacing for the suspension is different. So if you want to run your WRX suspension, or you don't want to change out your WRX suspension, you would have to run the WRX knuckle. Um, also, the wheel bearings are different between the WRX and the STI. So if you're going to try and run the STI knuckles, um, you've got to switch out the knuckles and the bearings and, and all that jazz. In the back, um, we haven't really dived into this ourselves deeply, but what it appears is that there's not nearly the same degree of issues in the rear uh, if you're going to run the STI uh, knuckles as there were in the, in the GD WRX. It appears that the parking brake and the rear caliper mount are the same, but we have not tried that ourselves yet. Um, so I can't confirm it, but that's what it appears to be. So um, 
yeah. So hopefully that helps. Hopefully that you know, helps address more questions that you might have after watching the first couple of videos that we've done. And if, you're, if you've watched all the, the videos and you still have more questions, by all means, drop them in the comments. If we ever circle back to this, uh, you know, we'll do our best to address them. So thanks very much for watching. We really do appreciate your support. And uh, stay tuned for more Flatiron Studying Tech Tips.